Now again, I want to talk about finite groups. And in particular, um, I want to say something about uh, subgroups of, inter of index 2. These are a bit more special than uh, other subgroups. In fact, they are all necessarily normal. And this is an interesting fact that we are going to prove in two different ways. So here's the setting. We have, say, a group G and a subgroup. Let's call it H. And this subgroup has index 2. So the index of H in G is equal to 2. What we want to show is that uh, G, sorry, H is normal in G. It's a normal subgroup. Now, as I said, I want to uh, give proof of this in two ways. One, namely, is the direct one. We just show the invariance under conjugation. So we show that, uh, the, for example, we can show it in this way, that the left cosets of H are the same as the right cosets, so for all Gs. Or we can take a slightly more sophisticated approach and use what we know about kernels, namely that the kernels are always normal, and if we manage to find a morphism which has H, precisely H, as the kernel, then we are done. The kernel. That is, so there exists a morphism of group, groups, Call it phi from G to some other group such that the kernel of this morphism is precisely H. So we need to show this, uh, this identity of the left cosets of G equal to the right cosets. Now this is obvious if G is an element already in H, right? The, if we are multiplying any elements of H with an element already in H, then we stay in H, namely this would all be equal to H. For these cosets. So we only need to show these for the remaining elements, which are uh, elements not in H. So assume now that G is uh, in the complement of H. Now let's picture, let, let's, uh, picture G as a box, like this. Now some part of this box would be H, the subgroup H, which we think of it now as a coset. And the since since we know that G that H uh, has index two into G, for left cosets, this means that there is only another left coset, namely G times H, for such G for any such G not not in H. In other words, G can be written as a set as H union G times H. Sorry. Okay, so what we have proved here is that G, uh, the coset, the left coset G times H, is equal to the complement of H for such, again, for such a G. 
Of course, we can repeat the same um, argument now with right closets. That is here, replacing uh, this GH with the right H G closet of H. We also have the same situation for G not in H. So G is equal to H times H G as closet subdivision. And therefore we have that H G is equal to G minus H. And now we are done. By these two, it follows that GH is equal to HG also for all. Well, for all G not in H, but we already show it, showed it for G in H, and therefore for all Gs. Now let's proceed to the second strategy, that is, we want to realize H as the kernel of some morphism. Now, for this we observe that G, as a group, acts, we have an action, on the set G over H, the two element set, which, co which consists of H and its complement. Now the action uh, is of course multiplication uh, with elements of G uh, and thinking of H as a coset, say for example a left coset, and we know that this coset will either be H or G minus H, just as before. But now we focus on the action on this action and we then observe that we from this we get a morphism. from the group G to precisely the set of permutations of uh, or the group of permutations of this two element set that's denoted by S of G over H. So since this is a two element set we can write this just as a S2 and that we give a name to our two elements one is the identity and one is the cycle one two Okay, so the action is clear. Either G goes to 1, to the identity, if G acts on H and leaves it invariant, so it acts as the identity, or G, an element of G, is sent to the 1, 2 cycle. If this doesn't happen and G times H, is the complement of H. So now the kernel of this uh, morphism, which is the stabilizer of H for this action, that is the uh, set of elements G in G such that um, G, so the action on H is uh, invariant or as the identity. And of course we know that this set is equal to H. And this concludes the proof of what we wanted to show.